two. All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Uh, Delio Schmagde here. It's my pleasure to be here on a special day such as this, which is my birthday. I'm, I'm sure, you know, I've been bombarded with love and with all manner of greetings all day. And I just want to appreciate everyone. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the prayers. I mean, the fathers have called, friends have called, sons and daughters from all over the world, and, you know, it's just been one day, uh, actually been reflecting on so many things. And um, as I thought about it, you know, about two months ago, that what will I do? I mean, for those who follow us and our ministry, you know that on my birthday, I try to do something special every year. And this year, uh, the Holy Spirit began to speak to my heart, the need to do one or two things. Uh, but more importantly, to also do this telecast and... Um, as I was pondering on who would, would be with me on set today, God just graciously sent my way, Apostle Femme Lazarus. I'm, I'm going to introduce him to us later, but um, I'm so glad that he's the one on set with us today. And of course, uh, just shortly after, we'll also be introducing another very, very wonderful servant of God also who came our way also. Um, so instead of uh, single dose, we're going to have double dose, I mean, this evening. But before we start, I want us to spend some time to just worship um, uh, because I, I'm, I'm also thanking God for the gift of life. I'm thanking God for how far he's helped me over the years. Um, God brought me to this country about a little over three years ago and he's just done so much. And uh, this is my third birthday in the UK since I came to the UK <laughs> and it's just been it's been so gracious it's been it's been so wonderful so we have a music team on set I just want them to just raise a song but while that is done if you are just joining us you could just uh, send a link to your friends Apostle Femme Lazarus in, in the house I'm going to unpack a lot of things we're going to speak a lot of things that I believe will also uh, dot the landscape of the body of Christ and we also help uh, ministers and believers alike, you know, to understand certain truths and to uh, be able to make the most of the opportunities God has given to us in the scheme of things as individuals and as a generation. So wherever you are, I'd like you to just lift up your hands and just glorify the Lord. In your own way, in your own words, just give him praise and say, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Let's thank him for choosing us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame in his sight. Let's thank him for sealing us with the Holy Spirit of promise, with the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of your kingdom is the right scepter. If there is any way Pastor Delio Shumagne has touched your life, has been a blessing. This is me now offering my thanksgiving, the fruit of my lips to God on a day such as this, that I pleased God to separate me from my mother's womb. I just want you to glorify God in me. I want you to glorify God with me. I just want you to thank him for the gift of life. I want to thank him for what he has done in us, with us and through us, making us relevant in the scheme of things, adding years to our life and adding life to our years. Oh, blessed be God. Blessed be God. This is that time where we just bless him, where we just bless him, where we just say, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, where we just thank him and, and, and we cause grace to spread through many so that thanksgiving can abound to the glory of God. Oh, thank you for all these years of grace spreading. It's been years of grace spreading, grace spreading through the many, grace spreading through the many, and causing thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Thank you, Father. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Magala Prakadina Mama Sudo Prostaba. Yes, 
Welcome everyone to this special birthday telecast, SMART. I remember when the Lord gave me that uh, acronym. It was in a meeting with Dr. Oshola Fola the other day. You know, we had a pastor's meeting where um, that was just came alive. And the Lord said it was supernatural mentorship, activation, reconfig reconfiguration and training. And the first one I had with Pastor Chin Talk. And today on my birthday, 26th of March, God has granted us an unusual favor to have with us here in the UK, right here in the studio, my brother, Apostle Femi Lazarus. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And uh, I mean, it's, I think, I mean, you won't believe this. Uh, this is actually the second time I'm seeing you in flesh and blood. The first time I saw you okay. was yeah. at uh, Encounter Jesus Oropo. when I was preaching yeah. for Apostle Mike yeah. Oropo. Yeah that particular Sunday and you happened to be there, to be there that day, yeah. you know, and uh, that was actually the first time we met, True. you know, and um, uh, this is the second time I'm seeing you, yes, you know, you know, physically. I, I want to thank God for your life and one of the reasons why your ministry became so, uh, I mean, what, what do I use now, in sync with my spirit. Mm -hmm. Uh, was uh, uh, that there's a name I call you. I always call you the Apostle of Wisdom because over the years I've seen that um, I, I've not quite listened. And you know, that's the beautiful thing about me. We, I don't really need to listen to someone, you know, for too long. It's, it's more of a spiritual transaction. And um, what, what then happens is that God has a way of just bringing people to me and the Lord says by time that listen to this individual, look at what this person is saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not just saying this because uh, you're here. It's what I've said also behind you. I, I just want to thank God for the wisdom that God has given you. And, and you know, when I see a true apostle, what I want to see as a signature upon that ministry is wisdom. Because Paul said, I'm a wise master builder. Yeah. And you know that one cannot be uh, truly an apostle without, you know, manifesting wisdom. And, and God has given you, maybe we should start from that. I mean, what, what, what I've been doing of late, what, what is the Spirit of God telling you? Uh, before we get into the matter at hand, just to uh, welcome those who are listening to this telecast by the way of you just, you know, breaking the ice. Oh. Um, thank you so much, Pastor, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's such um, a privilege yeah. um, to be here um, with you in Leicester to share um, this day with you. Mm -hmm. It's such an honor. Yeah. Um, and that question in itself is not, it's not small, it's a big question. <laughs> um, I, I believe that um, um, God is preparing the church now, the church as a global entity, um, for the next generation. And that's exactly what I've been doing, preparing um, for the generation that our fathers did not see. Wow. Um, what, what do you mean by that, a generation I mean, the fathers did not see? I mean, a, a new generation is coming up mm. um, that they, they are different from the generation the fathers led. Mm. And um, mm. so methods are changing, um, approach is changing, and um, mm. um, the generation of our fathers deals so, deals so much with faith. Mm. Um, this is a generation that wants fact and proofs. So mm. um, Christianity as a whole itself is built on faith. Mm -hmm. But this is a generation that wants, they don't just want to fit everything, they want um, something logical, mm -hmm. um, the gospel they can relate with. So um, that's exactly what we are doing now, preparing for that generation and mm -hmm. addressing that generation. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, that is interesting to me. So. You know, when, when you say things like this, and I, uh, you make me to feel as if I'm old. So what, what, is, what, what about this generation? Tell me more about this generation. Even though that's not what we want to talk about today, but, <laughs> but I, I'm interested. What, what have you found? What have you found about them? I, I, I think um, the, the nature of this unique generation, it's not one that is really hidden. Um, it's turning everywhere, from the family system to national matters, and then it's also spreading to the church. And one of the things we see about that generation is questions. Questions. It's a questioning generation. Um, because um, maybe the generation believes that some methods that were communicated in old time might have worked, but they are not found to be sufficient to, to solve the current day problem. Mm -hmm. um, so that generation is questioning bulk of those realities. And, um, and it may also look like generation is restless. Mm -hmm. Because um, if Joshua will take over from Moses, then Joshua will have to win with the sword. Mm -hmm. Wow. So are, are you now saying that there is, there's a disconnect somewhere? between what was done and what ought to be done now? I, I really do not think there's a disconnect. Um, I rather, I, I would think, I would like to say that um, um, there is um, an there's, a, there's a process of adjustment that is going on um, to meet the unique needs of that generation. It's not totally much of a disconnect. And because the work of the fathers is still speaking loud, and um, and they've made it easy for my generation, so I, I would not really want to think there's a disconnect. Okay, so so what what will you be saying to older ministers now, as far the kind of adjustment they need to make in the scheme of things to accommodate, or to understand, or reach out to this emerging generation? Because that that's going to call for a lot of flexibility, I suppose. I, I think. The, the thought that comes to my heart when in respect to older generation is um, while we're in service, mm. we go to the family house doing NYSC. Yeah, we stayed in family house. Well, I stayed there. in family house too. And, um, <laughs> we, 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 we had quite some issues with the generation we met on ground. Mm. Mm. But by the time my set was going to leave, we discovered that it was difficult to catch up with their templates. Mm. So I, I would not really have an advice for a generation we should catch up with. The fathers have done so much. We, we have so much to learn, so much to catch up with the labors. I think what my generation needs to do is to learn as much as we can, grab as much as we can from that mm. generation. We mm. may have different methods, slightly different, yeah. but we have too much to learn from them than to correct. Mm. Yeah. I'm happy you said that, that there's too much to learn than to correct because, you know, over the years what I've seen is that a lot of our contemporaries, instead of learning from them, are trying to correct them. 
and, and, and when I, I've only listened to about two of your teachings, other than snippets here and there, of course, social media, you know, and I've seen that you, you seem to understand uh, the issue of unity in the body, which is what I want to talk about today, and I'm going to uh, create a scenario, but before I do that, I, I want to be sure that uh, the multimedia guys are okay, because I'm seeing some movements in the room. Are we fine? We're good. Are we good now? Sound check, sound check. Okay, I will have to project now. So are we okay now? This time, okay, finally, no... No movement. And no movement, please. The, the picture you've taken is enough, please. We don't need you again. All right. Are we there? All right, so now, um, again, we're back. Sorry for that uh, uh, break in transmission. So like I said, Apostle, we're here to talk about um, unity in the body of Christ. And of course, uh, this matter is also very dear to me. And it's something I'd rather talk about on my birthday because I've seen that there's a generation of ministers out there. The problem they have is that we are no longer running things by the operating system of the Word of God. And, and that is scary because, you know, when, when you get to a point that Scripture is no longer the final thing that all of us respond to and, and that becomes, you know, the parameters with which we do ministry and that becomes our, um, you know, I'm, I'm in research and there's also a doctor here too, he's also a senior lecturer. And one of the things about the academia is that you can't, even if you are doing research, you can't really, as it were, say anything new. If you have a professor now, you want to do your PhD, what he's interested in is how much your work is in line, or in sync with the existing theoretical framing mm -hmm. of, your, of your field. Mm -hmm. So the more you're able to stand on the shoulder of that, and the more you're able to tell us what others have done, mm -hmm and what others are doing, and of course, what you intend to do, the more they take your work serious. But we're beginning to see that framework not being respected by law ministers, and that is what is creating some of the tensions we have in the body of Christ. And like we said, while we were eating the other time, that because people don't know history, and of course, the Bible, the historical data also that we can also harvest from scripture, is not also, very much in the consciousness of a lot of people again. Like, like I use an example, and, and that's where we start from. Like the issue of uh, when the Lord said, if somebody has something against you, and you want to bring your gift to the altar, he said, leave your gift there and go and reconcile with your brother. Something as simple as that. You realize that if people can just obey that alone, I'm not exaggerating, 60% of the troubles in the body of Christ will disappear overnight. Because I have something now against Apostle Femi Lazarus. Or let's say I have something against Pastor Bodge, just using them, or my brother Pastor La, or Apostle Rockpo, or wherever. You know, in most cases, what I'd rather do, instead of coming to talk to Apostle Femi Lazarus about Apostle Femi Lazarus, is that I'll go to somebody else. Mm. And, and look at how the Lord puts it. He said, in matters of ministry and in matters of brothers relating with uh, brother, gift represents whatever is the calling of God upon your life. Mm. The altar represents the platform that God has given to mm. you. So Jesus is saying in the scheme of things, reconciliation is more important than the gift and than the altar. Mm. He said, lift the gift on the altar. 
But, but it does appear that nowadays, gift and altar is more important because you see people who are here to reconcile, who are here to confront the other party, and they still carry on with the gift on the platforms. And, and it does appear that it doesn't really bother us again. So I want us to start from there because the Lord already gave us the blueprint for conflict resolution in the body. So there's no room for, 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 for bone of contention in the body other than the fact that we are not running this thing by the world again. Hmm. I, I think, um, should I say, a challenge began from the moment that um, we, be, we, we got to the point where we believed that um, um, we don't really need one another. Wow. Can so, say that again. Um, in all honesty, um, um, Yes, we might have a measure of result, but there is a there is the fullness of glory that comes mm. through the unity of brethren. Yeah. And um, until we have tasted that, we may not know what we are missing. Mm. It is difficult to cry for restoration about what you have never experienced. Mm. So wow. if we have experienced it once, mm. um, we will know what the absence of it looks like. Wow. Yes. Mm. So we need one another. We do. <laughs> and, and, and as far as we are concerned, that's a big problem. In the, we, we tend to act as if we don't need one another. Especially when the gift is evident and the platform is evident. Because that's what the Lord says. He said, leave the gift and the, and the altar behind and go and reconcile. So that means the Lord rates reconciliation. Because at the end of the day, he now said... If your brother listens to you, say you have gained your brother. Mm. So, so gaining the brother is more important to the Lord than mm. the next conference. Mm. Mm. The next, mm. uh, what we are doing at the next. So that means if, if, if there is a matter between me and somebody now, what the Lord was simply saying there is a PD. Before you go on that set with Apostle Lazarus, first of all, that means this set with Apostle Lazarus cannot be more important. Than the, than the existing issue between you and that brother. Yes, sir. Because the gift is not being offered to Satan. And Satan, the platform is not also for Satan. But the Lord said, leave both behind. Mm. And go find your brother. <laughs> and gain your brother. So, so again, you could see that he also gave us another very important assignment there. That the, Every conflict, we must find a way to resolve it. Because the, the essence of conflict is not for us to go our separate way. The Lord himself already told us that at the end of the day, what we want to achieve is that you need to gain your brother. And I feel bad, sincerely, whenever I see that. Because people come to me, and I'm sure Apostle Lazarus is the same with you. Too. People come and they're like, oh, so, so, and so, did so, so, and so. And the first question I ask them is that, do you have his number? Why not tell him? Mm. But, but they are more comfortable to come and tell me. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, have you told him? Because at times, like I usually say, assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Mm. You assume, you might think this is what he did, or he did that, how could he have... And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, why can't you just speak with him? Mm. And, and hear his own side of the matter too. It might be different from what you perceived that really happened. Mm. But you realize that in most cases, we'd rather talk to two or three others than to look to the guy and go and do exactly what the Lord asked us to do. He said, and, and you know again, he said in another place, he said, if it's between you and your brother, for, the first thing is to go and meet your brother. It is when he refuses to listen. Yes, sir. He now said, take all that, Brother, two brothers with you. Yes, sir. So that at the matter of truth, three witnesses, every truth is established. Then if they, if he refuses, he said, now tell it to the whole church. Yes, sir. And after all, you can count him a public and a sinner. But if you notice that in our time also, we'd rather first of all and tell it to the whole church. Mm. I mean, we come the next Sunday and you're like, so, so, and so. You say, oh, we could come like a minister did so, so, and so. And if... The high priestly prayer of the Lord in John 17 is anything to go by. D did you feel the passion with which the Lord was praying that prayer? Just like what you said, we, we always need one another. And on this day, that is my birthday on the 26th of March, 
2024, I want everybody in the body of Christ to just fulfill this first order. Honestly, don't, don't assume... <laughs> Oh God, you know, I'm getting a bit emotional. Don't assume you know it all. Let's follow the law. Let's follow the word. Let's be ministers of the word. And I picked another scenario, and this is where I really want Apostle Lazarus to really talk. This will be another scenario. Look at what happened between Paul and Barnabas. Yes, sir. scenario two. In Acts thirteen. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, and they began to mention their name Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Mynen, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Barnabas and Saul. And along the line, John Mark came in. Yes, sir. And the issue of, oh, should we take John Mark? Don't take John Mark. The Bible said the argument became so sharp. The contention was so sharp. And both of them parted ways. Paul took Silas. John Mark went with Barnabas. So the question is, why? Do we find they've gone in the body of Christ to manage conflict? Why would I've seen it over and over again? God raising two individuals and he's saying, run together. And suddenly something will happen. And, and that's why we're using Bible examples now, so that it doesn't look as if one is talking about because I don't even want to talk about anybody because there are too many. Yes. So I'd rather use examples in the word because these scenarios, what we just read now, is still happening today. So it might not be poor, it could be X, Y, Z. But God says, let's say, for example, now, Pastor Dele run with um, Apostle Femme Lazarus and we start running, we start doing stuff together, and suddenly a John Mark comes along. Because in this place, the Bible does not say separate unto him, Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark. Mm. It was not part of the equation. Yeah. So why do we allow mm. someone that's not part of the equation to separate people? Why is it that people don't learn from this thing? Because eventually, only God knows, just like what you said now, only God knows. What Paul and Barnabas could have achieved if they stayed together? Mm. Possibly the version of Apostle Paul we know today could even be more serious. So I want you to speak to that. Why is it difficult for ministers to manage conflict? Why does it have to end? That's by the fact that we know the Holy Spirit said. I mean, can it be clear that this separate unto me Barnabas and so? That means the work I have for them is for both of them. But eventually both of them did the work without coming together. Mm. They still did a measure of the work, but yes. honestly, I don't want to believe they, they did the fullness. Because the fullness, the Spirit already specified who's, who's going to carry out the fullness, that it would be a combo, a combination of both of them. So please, Apostle, I'd like you to speak to that, because that is there to my heart. So, number one, I, I feel ministry, ministry is a delicate work. <laughs> Can well, say that again. Delicate in the sense that it is the only work that your script is marked when you die. Oh. Any other thing hmm. that any other person may have to say may be compliment hmm. from their perspective. Hmm. Hmm. Um, but ultimately, the one who judges everything sees from the entire jigsaw. Wow. Wow. So, um, and it, 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 it becomes even, I mean, as... as one who you know passed through the school system. Sometimes you finish an exam and you believe, oh, I've cleared all I've, this paper. I've, I've killed it. <laughs> Only to discover that I mean you, you've not done what hey, you should have done. That happens every time. <laughs> you know, I have thought about this question mm. again and again before now, and I can see how how much this matter is to your heart. Mm. And these are questions I've also asked God. Mm. Um, particularly because I've seen myself also make mistakes in that direction. Wow. So I, I will speak from the lessons of my mistake um, in that I'm, direction. Yeah, that's bad. Um, I think that that um, probably if I've not had situations that have um, almost gotten me to the point where I say, you know what, I don't want to move with this person again, mm. then I might not have 
Um, I think the first thing is that mm. um, even when God said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul um, for the work I have called them, um, it is Barnabas and Saul. Mm. A Saul can say, why not Saul and Barnabas? <laughs> Here we go again. So, um, <laughs> So, so that means that plays out in our generation that why Barnabas and Saul? It does. It does. Should have been Saul and Barnabas. It does. It does. So somebody must be the ogre in the camp. It does. It wow. does. It does play out. Interesting. But I also feel another thing is that sometimes mm. a, a, a Saul has the revelation of the relationship more than a Barnabas, mm. or a Barnabas has the revelation of the relationship more than a Saul. Mm. Mm. And um, mm. the one who doesn't have the revelation will be the most interested in opting out. Mm, wow. Wow. Um, so, wow, that's true. I, know, I feel there's something we don't pay attention to as touching relationships generally in the body of Christ. I think as the matter of upbringing. Hmm. I remember. I feel the issue of upbringing, which I'm going to break into two, both um, home upbringing now. Yeah. And the first spiritual family one belonged oh. to when you entered into it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The thought process of yeah. that spiritual family becomes a lifestyle. Yeah. If care is not taken, if that foundation is laid by individuals mm. who are critical mm. because of the nature of their upbringing, um, I think what we end up doing is to find scriptures, to make doctrine, to justify our criticality. Mm. Mm. And um, the moment you can mm. find a doctrine wow. for something, it becomes a permanent way of life. It becomes a culture. Yeah, even if the basis of that doctrine is, is defective. Yes. Mm. I mean, I, I studied John chapter number 17. Yeah. One could tell the emotions mm. of Jesus when, when he was saying that they are in the world, keep them as one, mm. even as you and I are one. Mm. Yeah. So um, mm. I also think another thing that affects unity is the issue of fear. Mm. Wow. Sometimes fear of contamination. Which contaminating one? <laughs> um, I think that stems from superiority complex. Yes, that only had that doubt. A brother is caught in a fault. Nobody should associate with him or even stand by him. Uh, now that's that's one of the words of Saul we have misconstrued. We're even coming to that. Yeah. We're coming to that because that's that's a major one. But if you want to go that route, no problem. I mean, I, I'd, I'd prefer you go the route. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just follow uh, behind. I mean, <laughs> It's, you know, Kai, it's, you know what you say about that Saul and Barnabas, you say Barnabas and Saul. Mm. Why do we like to have preeminence? Why do we, I mean, it, it's, I don't, maybe again, is is the way, just like you say, upbringing. Look, mm. I, when I became born again, I, I was exposed to, to the writings of uh, the late Kenneth Taking of Blessed Memory. Yes. And, and one of the things I started noticing is the need to walk in love. I don't think today, as we're talking, Apostle Lazarus, that there's anybody on the face of the earth that I had an issue with and have not made. Whether, whether they now want reconciliation or not, is that, you know, you, at times you do all that is in your power. Mm. Humanly speaking. Yes. But that I won't follow what Jesus said there to reach out to them and to try to seek reconciliation. Because I I also believe that if God said separate unto me Barnabas and Saul, God, mm. God already knew your weaknesses. Except, except we now think God can make mistakes. If God says that, for instance, now let's just say I, I will even use somebody like Pastor Collins as an example now. And God says, okay, work with Collins, do stuff together. You know, from that day, Collins ceases to be a younger minister to me. Hmm. Because an assignment given from the Lord already brought both of us together. Yes, sir. But you see, only very few people see these things. Because at the end of the day, somebody say wants somebody to be their boy and, you know, and, and all that, and we forget to see the bigger picture, and at the end of the day, we mess up everything. It, it was pain, painful the day Barnabas separated from Paul on the account of John Mark. So, 
let's call some, something John Marxism. Hmm. <laughs> and what do I mean by John Marxism? Any factor that separates minister. Well, from, from your own experience and from what you are seeing in this generation, what are the critical John Marxism, you know, John Mark factors? That, because it's always something. You, you've, you've said one of them, inferiority complex, or oh, another one, somebody feels I'm holier. Mm. They are not holy. So I'm holy, you know, so, uh, you know, I don't want them to pollute or corrupt what God is doing. And, and you're like, are those people also children of a lesser God? Or what? So what are, what are the various John Mark factors that you've seen over time that just separated people? Quality relationships. In all honesty, yeah. yeah. It is, well, what we are discussing here is a lot scary <laughs> because, and the reason why is because <laughs> we can finish this conversation and have to pass this same test mm. the next moment. So I think it is a subject <laughs> that nobody can speak on as an authority. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because um, there again, till we see Jesus, we have to keep practicing this love walk. Yeah. We have to keep practicing forgiveness. Love walk. We yeah. have to keep practicing letting go, um, mm. forgiving in advance. Mm. I, 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 I have seen um, situations where um, two people have to go separate ways, and you can tell that they both genuinely love God. Mm. But I think... Um, like some, in this case also, Paul and, yes. Paul and Paul. Yes. But I, I think what we... Probably we are not conscious of is the fact that um, it's also a sign that we love something else more than God. And mm -hmm. that's self. And, and this is where um, this comes in. I think we, we have forgotten that um, something existed before the devil. Something converted Lucifer to become the devil, and that whatever can make the Lucifer, the anointed cherub that covers the um, display of beauty and splendor, mm. become what he is. Mm. We should fear that in more than the devil. Mm. When he spoke, he said, I will ascend, I will be like the Most High, mm. I, and that's the personality of self. Mm. We, we can be free from demons, and self still has more preeminence. Mm. Um, and that's why um, sometimes I can feel mm. that even though you know who I am, mm. you should not have done this to me. Mm. And then we, you know, God taught me something. He said, well, you are either a man of your words or a man of my word. Wow. So meaning that if I say this is my verdict on this matter, at his word, I must be able to repent. Mm. And so even God, Moses spoke to God and the Bible says God repented mm. of the evil yeah. that was in his heart. God repented when the man spoke. Mm. Um, so I, I think that's the issue. We love God genuinely, um, but um, if you ought me, um, um, uh, I, I'm so important compared to who God is, <laughs> that you understand. And um, so I think wow. that's the issue, really. So that, that the bottom line there is still that we, the word of God is not still the final authority in the scheme of things. Because you just said something now that Let's even say emotions rose, things happen. But by the time you now look at the word and you are like, okay, what has the word of God got to say about this? Can we still subject ourselves to the authority of when the When people are angry, people say, let's leave the word and face reality. Ah. So that tells us that, that the word is not the reality of many people. <laughs> you know, I hear that and it's always like, let's leave the word and face reality. Let's face reality. And and as I mean, as someone who, when I gave my life to Christ, my foundation was laid through the writings of again the teachings of Kenneth Hagin. Yeah. Um, it it is scary for me mm. to see the practices that some people in time past lost their lives and their ministries over. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, Papa Hagin was always talking about all these stories. I mean, and this forgiving ministers or somebody else in bitterness. If you've read this book, you realize that it's always talking about, it's always giving all these instances. I think, I think one of the most demonic things I've found is that people don't mind using their entire life to prove a point. Ah. <laughs> to uh, prove a point that somebody is wrong. Yes. Even mm -hmm. when it is, and this, this, and sometimes we, we fail to realize that the strongest keda of the army of the devil 
is outrightly against the unity of brethren. I mean, um, Peter describes the devil, described him as, as, as a wounded lion. He said, be sober and be vigilant for the devil your adversary, like, almost like a wounded lion, single medieval. Mm -hmm. But lions don't attack animals in park. Mm -hmm. They wait for the isolated, they mm -hmm. wait and the wounded, mm -hmm. um, the young. The young. Um, the way those young ones that are vulnerable. Who are vulnerable. <laughs> uh, and this is the reason why God, the Bible says that God said the solitary families. Mm. But he now went to say, but the rebellious mm. will dwell in dry land. So the rebellious in that context will be those who have refused families, mm. the association of brethren. Yeah. So I think, because I mean, academically, maybe I have a medical background, so I understand anatomy, I know how these things work. And the Bible describes the church as the body. The body of Christ. You know, so a body. And what that means is that something flows from every part of the body. Mm. Um, our supply is from every part. Mm. So it, it, it's a component. They, everything is coupled to work together. Mm. And we don't know what we are losing mm. when we chisel out a part. Mm. And then, you know, say this. Yes. Mm. I know one of the most important thing why I respect Apostle Paul is Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 11. Paul said only look is with me and eventually Paul said get Mark and bring him with you for it's mm. useful for me for ministry. Mm. Apostle is amazing that years after Paul sent for Mark the same Mark that Paul said you are not going to go with us you are inexperienced but before we even come into that, I, I want to also advise young ministers that if you suffer rejection, don't make it to upend your ministry. Despite the fact that Paul did not allow John Mark to go with them, John Mark did not because of that backslide. John mm -hmm. Mark continued to grow. Yes, sir. Because there will be people, it does not matter. You see, you might, you might want to relate with a particular minister or possibly you have even started relating with a particular minister and it, some things happen, and at the end of the day, they kick you out, you know. Don't, on the account of that, now say your ministry has ended, your life has ended, you know, and because of that, you're not going to do any other thing again. Learn from John Mark. John Mark continued to grow until such a time that Paul now realized he needed John Mark. Hmm. We don't know how many years, let's say 20 years ago, Paul said, this guy cannot go with us. Hmm. And it might be the dealings of God upon the spirit of Apostle Paul that mm. possibly, just like what you are saying, maybe at some point God said, instead of, instead of using a lifetime to prove a point that this young man is wrong, why not just send mm. for him? But you know the scenario now, Apostle, is that what we now see playing out today is that Paul sends to, for John Mark and John Mark now refuses to come. Mm. John Mark says, never. See the way he treated me. See the way he embarrassed me. I am bored, forget it, forget it. I'm not going to go to Paul. And I also want to salute Peter. I want to salute Barnabas. So that means why? Because when Paul left John Mark, Barnabas took him up. Mm. So it was the mentorship of Barnabas that kept John Mark on the way. Yes. And at some point, he became a son in the faith of Peter too. Because Peter talked about mm. Marcus, my son, he was referring to the same John Mark. You know what they did not do that a lot of people do today? They didn't also plant a seed of rebellion in him mm -hmm. to tell him that, ah, if that Paul, if, did he treat you this way? If anyone should treat you this way, if they send for you again, ah, no, 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 never go back to Paul. But what surprised me was that when Paul just woke up one day and he said, ah, I know, look at how he started out. He said, only Luke is with me. Hmm. He said, bring your mark. It's not profitable. Sure. So, so that means John Mark continued to do what God has put in his heart to do. Mm -hmm. He failed once, but he never failed to continue. And at some point, possibly on social media, Paul just said, hearing of him, just using today's analogy, and Paul said, was that not the same young man that we said? So the lesson here is that even if a father or a mentor, a former pastor should hurt you, embarrass you, quote and unquote, reject you. Learn from Apostle Paul, a time will come also that God can tell them that, because it, it will amaze you that it was as Paul was finishing his course, hmm. he sent for John Mark. 
So, so that means the Holy Spirit must have been telling Paul that you cannot finish this assignment. See, see the mistake made at that time is that you were still relatively young. John Mark was also an altered. Both of you did. But mm -hmm. we cannot deny the fact that there is still a connection between both of you. And Paul, as you are getting to the tail end, as you are about to finish, because it was after he said, I have finished my course, and all that, he sent for John Mark. So that means there must have been something upon John Mark that is called a finishing grace. Mm. And that Paul now discerned that, mm. look, if, and this is a very important message for fathers. That at some point in your ministry, some people you once fought, you might have to send for them. Mm. And so, so let, let's salute Paul here. It was not easy. I, I mean, maybe people don't understand this scenario. You fought Barnabas because of this young man. You said you didn't want to see this young man. You would rather walk out of a God-ordained relationship other than to have John Mark. But here you are now, sending Timothy mm -hmm. <laughs> to the same young man and, and, and telling Timothy that, look, Timothy, uh, you know, I might not be able to do this directly. Maybe if I call his number, he might not answer me. And that's why I tell people, look, don't have, have young people around you. Have... Relate with fathers, relate with contemporaries, relate with those, those, I mean, look for instance now, Apostle, one of the things I've seen about you, and I must say this is on set here, is the way you relate with your pastor, Pastor Bimbo Marshall, yes. that him. Yes. No, no, no. It's, you see, the day I got to know he was your pastor, and recently I saw him praying for you. Yes. Sir. I went on, that day, my heart got healed. Wow. Because I'm like, look, uh, Pastor, in fact, still sent me a, a heavy message today. I've wow. never met him. It's funny enough, Amazing. but he has always been, when I do a post, he's always, you know, I, I read a lot from him, but I, I don't think I've met him one-on-one. -on -one. And to now know that you came out of that stable and you still honor him. <laughs> I know. You, you, are, you are a rare breed. I give that to you. <laughs> because, in, in fact, most of what we see nowadays is that when, when you get to a level, you don't even want people to know you came out of that source. Oh, really? <laughs> so that, like you said, Barnabas and Saul, Saul and Barnabas. But you see, you still in the fire. And, and so, so a, a time came, Paul just decided. And, and you see what that battered apostle. Hmm. I, I, I think... I, I don't really take it much as a big deal. It's because of the kind of heart that God has given to you. Mm. Because people now feel I'm already bigger than that place. So I can't identify with that place. Again. I feel where you grew up from a house and you get big, your duty is to expand your father's house. Not to um, get another person's father's house. Please say that again. Uh, when God <laughs> raised you, your duty is to expand your father's house. <laughs> so not to go to another person's father's house. Well, you exemplified that in a very wonderful manner. And that just... I, I, so, like I said, I think for me, it's about having the revelation of the Father God has placed you under, mm. that size is not in the number of congregations. Oh. Um, so, oh. or the number of branches, oh. or the money in the account. There's something called covering. Ah. You know, so... Mr. Apostle Lazarus, I want you to face the camera and say that <laughs> because there are young ministers okay. listening. And I, I want this to be a punchline. And, and in, all, in all honesty, I, I, I feel that we must understand the reason why God is lifting us. Hmm. If God, I, I want to say this with all humility, wants to raise you as a consolation to your spiritual family, and you decide to quit. God will raise another consolation for the family. Oh, um, but the virtue behind, the mm. grace behind the reason why you are lifted, from that day start drying. So I, I don't think it's something that requires too much thought for anybody mm. to know. Mm. Then I also think um, we must treat covenant relationships for what they are. Mm. Um, it doesn't matter whether you are pleased with it all the time. Mm. Um, God planted me here. Mm. I can't transplant myself. 
So I think for me that is it. So let's talk about Paul's support, the humility of Paul. <clears throat> Despite all that transpired between him and Barnabas, to, I mean, Barnabas and John Mark, to still find that grace to send for John Mark. Hmm. It, it, I mean, you know, we gloss over some of these stories, but it is only just like you say, if you have experienced some of these things, <laughs> that's where you know that what Paul did there was a mass. It was, it's not easy. I mean, you've, it's just like you've gone mm. on YouTube, on Facebook to rubbish yes. the guy. Because we need to bring this to today's yes, content. You've said, this guy is nothing, this guy is rubbish, da 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 And suddenly, mm. one day the Holy Spirit wakes you up and you say, the next convention, this guy must teach. Mm. What do you do? <laughs> so, I, I, so, let me say something, <laughs> something I've never said publicly. All right. I mean, people talk about hearing uh, messages everywhere. It's moving all over the world. So there was an instruction God gave me before this season came. Mm. When our church, I think that should be um, uh, just a few months, years back now. Let me just quote it as that. We're going to change venues. God gave me three instructions. Number one, he said, everything the church has ever acquired, go and give it to a ministry. Find any ministry that needs it and give it. Wow. And you walk with the blessing and walk by faith. Gave me another instruction, something also around that area. The third instruction was the most difficult. So, so, and so, and so, sons who have left the ministry out of hurt and pain, go and beg them. Wow. That was the most difficult one. That, that was what Paul did. Because I, I felt, that was when it occurred to me that if care is not taken, we get to a point where we feel some people in their rebellion should be a lesson. Mm. Wow. And huh. God is not interested in them being a lesson. Yeah. He's interested in their ministry. And he's also interested in you. In me too. Mm. And in all honesty, mm. sometimes... And we, that thought instruction must have been tough. No, it was tough. But mm. it is the best thing that has happened to me. Wow. In fact, that was when I, it occurred to me. I think what happened to my heart after then is that there's nobody I can beg. Hmm. There's nobody I can prostrate for and say, you see, I'm sorry. So you see that it wasn't about them, it was, it was about, about me. you. Yes. It was you, yes. God was working something in. Yes. Hmm. Yes. So, I mean, it, it, was a, it was a tough one, but thank God I, I, I did it. I, I think what we have not realized is that hmm. the harvest is much the laborers are few mm. god will not partner with you in making the few laborers a waste because you're angry mm -hmm. he will do everything he can to make sure that nobody's lost i think meekness is the ability to join god in that thought process mm. i think it is when we come to that thought process that i would rather go through the mud than for you to be lost that's when god gives us real power mm. Because, I mean, we can hear what God said and know what he's saying. And we kill Isaac. Mm. And Isaac is the future. Yeah. So some can even say, can even hear, maybe just feel God is saying, okay, now it's time to release this person. But now God is saying, forgive. Mm. So God is saying, go and beg the person. Mm. The ministry structure may say this, mm. but God is saying, I'm greater than the structure. Wow. Go and forgive and do that. And in all honesty, like you have said, sir, and I know that's from experience, mm. wealth of experience. Yeah. Most times it is about you, not the person. Yeah, it's about you. Yes, sir. It's about you. So, Paul sent for John Mark. Mm. That's a master stroke. It is. And John Mark responded. He did. So, we also need to beg young ministers, please, when you are sent for, <laughs> don't now say, eh? The man that embarrassed me. Eh? The man that publicly disgraced me. I will never. Because let me tell you, what the bigger picture there? This was Paul sending Timothy. Yes, sir. And he was saying Luke was with me. Yes, sir. Guess what? <clears throat> Peter must have been the one. Look at look at that. That gave the story of the life and ministry of Jesus to John Mark. Because why Jesus was there, John Mark was not yet born. Possibly he was still a small boy. Because remember, after Peter was arrested. It was in the house of the mother of John Mark. They were having prayer meeting, and there was no record that John Mark was part of that prayer meeting. He was just a small boy. So it was later, he became a PA to Barnabas and Paul on their first missionary journey. And when he saw how mission field was, mm. the guy ran. Mm. 
and that, that infuriated Paul. But look at what happened. Look at now the destiny of John Mark. So fathers, and those of us who are becoming fathers, he must interest us in order. It does not matter how John Mark misbehaves, just like Apostle Lazarus said. You are the one God is really dealing with. Because John Mark also has got a destiny in God. He's going mm. to write the gospel according to St. Mark. Mm. And whether you <clears> like <throat> it or not, scripture is not complete today without the gospel according, according to, to Mark. So, so that means that young man that hurt you, that young minister mm. that hurt you, also remember that, yeah, they could be young, they could do some things wrong, but that doesn't mean they are write-offs. Mm. And look at, look at where it now got interesting. Paul wrote to Timothy, right? Mm. Luke wrote gospel. Yes. John Mark wrote gospel. Yes. Guess who brought Mark, Luke, and Timothy together? Paul. Mm. Look at the wisdom of God. Mm. So that means it was the grace upon Paul to write mm. that rubbed on Luke and Mark. Wow. But you see, the funny thing is that Paul did not write the gospel. No, he didn't. It was those that were around him, Luke and John Mark, who both of them, by the grace of God, were not even eyewitnesses. Out of the four people that wrote the gospel, only John and Matthew were eyewitnesses. True. Luke was not there. Hmm. Mark was not there. Hmm. But look at how the relationship between Paul, John Mark, Timothy. Barnabas, Timothy, brought together that entire story. So, so it must have been as Barnabas was with... I mean, P I mean, John Mark was with Peter. Peter started recounting the story. Just mm. like I recount the story, and John Mark started noting the story. It was getting exciting. And before you know it, because they were now all with Paul, because you see that again, Paul referencing, I mean, you, we can open it again and again. I don't want to go into that. Paul referencing Mark, Luke. Mark, Luke. So, so on, on the missionary journey, Luke also started saying, you know what, Brother Mark? I'm investigating because don't forget Luke was also an eyewitness. I'm from Acts 1. In Luke 1, he's saying as much as many have taken in down to set in order a narrative of those things that are most surely believed among us, even as those who are eyewitnesses and ministers of the mm -hmm. world have handed them over to us. It seemed good to me also, having that perfect understanding of all things, to write unto you an orderly account, O oh, most of your you know, everything from the very beginning so that you might know the certainty of those things wherein you are instructed. Luke 1, 1 to 3. To show that he was not there. But how did he know what those who are eyewitnesses and ministers of the word said? Peter said it to Mark. Mark and Luke became traveling companion of Paul. So while Paul was praying, both of them would sit down behind and they would be comparing us. So, so what did he say that Jesus did? Because I'm mm. investigating it. Mm. And before you know it, that relationship did not just produce epistles. That relationship also produced gospels. gospels. Hmm. You see why the enemy is always fight, making us to fight ourselves. Hmm. Imagine Paul did not ask John Mark to come back. Possibly there will be that urge to write in John Mark because it, you see, this is one of where it gets interesting, Apostle. It was in my study of church history, I found out that the epistles were written before the gospels. Hmm. Yes, sir. So that means Paul was already an established writer before John Mark and Luke started writing. Hmm. So guess who influenced their writing? It, it, it is an open, 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 open thing. Yes. It's an open secret. Hmm. It was the, because Paul was the erudite scholar. So yes. it was their relationship with Paul that brought that dimension. And these guys were also like, yeah. And, and you know what encouraged them? They saw that even what Paul was writing, he wrote it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It hmm. wasn't that he saw Jesus in the flesh. No, no, no. So they too now began to see that it is possible to document By the life and ministry of Christ without having seen him. Because mm. the only two other guys that wrote were there physically. True. Mm. Mm. So that means anyone. Now this is what I, I'm, I'm saying to say that. I'm just hand over to Apostle to say something. What I'm saying is this. Anyone that God in his wisdom must have brought our way. Even when we fight, let us discern the body. Hmm. Let us know that, just like you said, our fighting them or disapproving of them doesn't mean God doesn't have a plan for them. Hmm. And that doesn't. will humble everybody. Because if we were told that it's this same John Mark that will write a gospel, hmm. it's this same Luke who was a doctor that will write a gospel and that will 
become of the family part of the family of Paul. So you try to retain your Paul. So John Mark, you mm. better listen to Paul when he sends for you. Mm. Um, Father Paul, you better also find grace mm. when God is asking you to bring John Mark. Because mm. at the end of the day, the scripture is not complete without both sides. Over to you, sir. I mean, some, something is coming to my heart. Um, two perspectives yeah. when it comes to writing people off. Um, the first is the story of Jacob, Leah, and um, Rachel. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is, it is amazing how that, um, if you ask Jacob, Rachel was the queen. Mm -hmm. But the lineage of the Messiah was from Leah. Wow. Wow. The one he despised. Um. So he gave birth to Levi, mm. gave birth to Judah. Mm. And another one that comes to heart is the story of um, Joseph. And I think for me, this is the most humbling. Mm. How that his brothers would sell him to slavery mm -hmm. and became a prime minister in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And yet, the people that God wants to use him to preserve mm. is among those who sold him to slavery. <laughs> Judah was still there. Wow. <laughs> the one that the Bible says that the scepter will not depart That's from until true. Shiloh comes. Mm. And so sometimes we might go through the rocks and it is still not about us. Mm. Mm. I mean, how will Joseph have felt that? I mean, look at this now, having gone through all this. Mm. So sometimes God can put an anointing on you mm. to use you to preserve those who have hurt you the most. Mm. Wow. Because it is still not about you. And it is not about your pain. Mm. We wow. now use those things as instrument of knowing that it is only a privilege for me to have gone through this. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm. Wow. Like wow. 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 For, for instance, I look at Philemon 24. Mm. Philemon has only one chapter, so 24. Well, I thought they were projecting the scripture on the screen for us. So we can read it from there. It's fine. I mean, this is now Paul talking when he was trying to reconcile Nesimus with Philemon. And Apostle, look, look at that place. Look at what he said. I mean, this is Paul. This is a big lesson. Mm. And in verse 23, he said, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you. Suddenly, again, as do Mark, mm. Aristarchus, Demas, Luke. Suddenly, the one that was rejected is now my fellow liberals. Fellow liberals. <laughs> Woo! Mm -hmm. ah, Apostle Paul, you, you are a blessed man. <laughs> Suddenly, fe Mark, now fellow liberal. And look at, look, look at that verse. Yes. The two writers of the gospel came out of that verse. Mm. So it was as they went to fellow laboring with Paul. Mm. That grace of writing rubbed on them. Yes, sir. Fellow laborers, and and you remember Demas? Yes. Sir. You know what you said about Demas they before. But now Demas is a fellow laborer. Fellow laborer. Ah, we need to learn from Apostle Paul. How do you get to a point that these guys that you once said, imagine said, but the Demas has forsaken me. I haven't loved this present world, and you know, now Demas. These are my fellow laborers. So so that means a time comes in which. The labor of the gospel is beyond our fights. Hmm. That, that look, I, I don't, Apostle, I have, uh, and myself, and I remember the other day, myself and my friend, uh, Pastor Sean Koka, we were just talking about this, and, you know, uh, Sean Koka and I went to the same secondary school. Hmm. So we've been friends. In fact, we all became born again around the same time. and. We all used to go after the girls in those days together mm. as unbelievers. I've known him. <laughs> so, mm. and, and we're seeing something and we're like, oh God. We're just talking one day and we're like, ah, why? Why is there so much put of contention? Is it that people don't understand some of these things? And this is what Apostle Paul is now showing us and it's making us to understand and to realize that, look, labor, fellow laborers, Hmm. It's beyond our petty fights. It's beyond our disagreement. And, and one of the things we're talking about, I was referring to Shem Koka, that we're talking about how even if we don't teach the same thing, hmm. God can still cause us to labor together. Yes, sir. 
and we yes. don't have to, because laboring together in the gospel is beyond you coming to preach on my platform or me coming to preach on your Truth. platform. It's 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 like like for instance, and look at what you did the other day. I didn't know. You you told a beloved sister to to come to Leicester and to come and introduce herself to me to to yes, come sir. to church. That's fellow laboring. Mm. So it's not the way we are sitting together, we're doing conferences together. And, but Paul made us to understand that when it comes to the labor of the gospel, God is beyond our prejudice. God is beyond our, you know, whatever we, we you know, feel is. Because the reason why we're saying this is that ladies and gentlemen, brothers and Christ, every, brothers and sisters in Christ, everyone listening, this Paul's thing is going to be happening. This is what the Spirit of God is saying. Much more nowadays. It's going to be happening. And what is that Paul's thing? God will begin to speak to you to send for those that you once mm. <laughs> cost. Mm. Mm. Cost in quotes and off quotes. Mm. Mm. And he will ask you to send for them. And he will, he will tell you that at the stage you are in now, it's mm. profitable for you. Mm. And the reason why I'm also sharing this is that you as a Barnabas, you must, when they send for you, don't not also say, ah, no, 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 no. I'm not doing this again. That will, that will also be wrong. Hmm. And if ever there's, that's the better present I give to anyone, I think it's enough for you to know that this is what the Lord is saying hmm. here. Because this is the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ in John 17. Hmm. Unity. Especially if the fight... It's just flesh. Hmm. It's just ego. Hmm. It's just immaturity. Hmm. In most cases, these things are not even doctrinal. Just like you said, you know, I had that one experience. And, and I wanted to speak to this apostle because I heard you speak about it before. I had one, so somebody came to me and he said, if you want to be my friend, if you want us to continue to relate to ministry, you must not relate with X, Y, Z. Hmm. And I said, what did X, Y, did to do? And the person said, oh, no, no, is this, is that, is this. And, and the next question is, have you confronted him? And he said, no, I don't want to confront him. And for us to be friends, don't just have anything to do with him. And, and I just had to politely decline and say, I don't do that. Why do people do that? Why do you feel we own this camp? <laughs> and, and that you determine who relates with who and legislate relationships in the body of Christ. I think sometimes whenever that happens, people seem to have a, a scripture to back it up. And oftentimes it's misconstrued. Uh, yeah, you, you were even going to that earlier. That is misconception of some of the things Paul wrote. I want you to speak to that. <laughs> so, I mean, so, I mean, understand that this is a conversation about unity in the body yeah. of Christ. Uh, Paul wrote quite a number of things that, if not understood carefully and intrinsically, we might feel they contradict. Yeah. Um, for instance, when he was talking to the Corinthians, said that if, you, if there's a fornicator, one who is a drunkard, one who is this, don't even stand with him mm -hmm. and all that. When he was speaking to Timothy, in 1 Timothy 5.20, he said, them that they that sin, Rebuke before, before all, the others, the others also by fear. But the same Paul also said, if any man is caught in a fault, let, let them who have the spirit of meekness restore such, restore a, such a person. Mm. Now, um, nothing, and uh, theologically, yeah. nothing passes to be a doctrine mm. until it agrees with the corroborative effort of scriptures. Mm. That is, it is not a standalone. You know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. there's this basic thing people just mean that once there are two scriptures that bears witness to this. Yeah. But a doctrine really is established when the entire flow of thoughts of the Bible yeah. does not negate it. Yeah. So yeah. the question yeah. is, yeah. what is the flow of thoughts of the entire scripture? Restoration. Mm. Man sinned, yeah. man could not pay, yeah. God became man, paid mm. the price. The restoration, that's the yeah, flow of thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So what will be the flow of thoughts when somebody is caught in a sin? Restoration. restoration. That's, restoration. I mean, that's just so basic. Mm. You know, so um, if we don't see from there, we, we will destroy in code those that God, those that God should use us to raise up. Yeah. And strengthen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, like like somebody said that it is only in Christianity that we destroy our wounded soldiers. Mm -hmm. in, in all honesty, I'm not even going to argue the fact that maybe somebody 
did something mm. or not. Mm. The question is, should that be the end mm. of the person's ministry? Mm. And by what grace? I mean, Jude, I think verse 24 says, unto him that is able to keep us from falling mm. and present us spotless before yeah. Yeah. So there is the grace that keeps us. And um, Paul speaking to Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1 says, Seeing therefore that we have this ministry, having received mercy, mm. we faint not. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. um, I, and I, I, I just beg to say that sometimes people are honestly sincere, mm. but we can be sincerely wrong. Mm. Um, sincere, but sometimes mm. those sincerity too, is mixed with a lot of hearsays. Mm, mm, and wow. um, sometimes even when the matter has been solved, the hearsay will not go. Yeah, and that makes yeah. reconciliation much difficult. Mm. So long after God must have forgiven people, people still hold them. I mean, and they don't believe that they've moved on. Because God will not consult anybody to heal anybody. In the Valley of Dry Bones, he never spoke to any other person other than Ezekiel. Mm. He didn't say, hey, everybody gather, come and see these bones. Mm. So somebody who saw them yesterday may conclude that they are still bones. But already they are a great army. Wow. So um, I, I, I think, um, and I say this with, like, like, um, with a plea in my heart, um, that we will be hypocritical to say that we believe that when a sinner is in the world, he can be saved. But when a believer makes a mistake, it's grounded. It's, it's grounded. Then that, that, that doctrine is not sitting well. It's not. It's not, it's not. Balanced. It's not. It's not. Because it's a, we that is easier to say that your sins are forgiven. And, and, and I, I also want to, <laughs> please, sir, to yeah. also say this, because there might be somebody there who is saying, all about those who are living in sin intentionally and all that. I mean, such a person is not even a Christian in the first place. That's the thing. All That's right. Thing. So we are talking about believers who probably mm. got caught in the fault, mm. are repentant, Mm. And to be given the chance to yeah. stand. Yeah. And and that doesn't rule out the fact that it's also, uh, whether it's a believer or it's a minister, a must. We, we need to, we need to discern the Lord's body. And that, that as we bring this to a close, I'm going to read a scripture. And I'm, I'm, after another question, then I'm going to ask Apostle to give his final, final thought. Because I think it's, um, and... I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Daniel Lawande to join us shortly. Uh, is Pastor Daniel somewhere around? Um, mm, now Paul began to write in 1 Corinthians 11, 27. There's, there's a way we do ministry, just like Apostle Femme Lazarus said. There's a way we do ministry in an unworthy manner. Hmm. So, so, so I want to take everything he said there about communion as a way of doing ministry. And in verse 27, he said, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood of the Lord. And as ministers, let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. And the reason is that not discerning the lost body. And look at the consequences. Mm. Verse 30. For this reason many are weak. Many are weak mm. Sick. And many even die. Mm. Apostle, you see, this is where it gets so touching. Had these folks not had they not have um, taken part in this communion service, they would be alive. Hmm. It hmm. was this communion service that made them weak, hmm. made them sick, hmm. and made them sleep. I mean, look at that, everyone. I mean, should, should this be the result of communion? That means on a good day, if, if they do it in a, or if they did it in a good manner, they should be strong, they should be healthy, and, and they should be alive. How can something that has to do with the Lord not make people sick? Hmm. Make people weak and make people die. Hmm. 
You know, you said something. You said the day people start dishonoring uh, those that God has raised, and you know, used to father them and used to you know raise them in ministry. So some things will start drying up. You know, remember you said that earlier. Mm. So the same way also, there is a way we can do the things of God. That is our producing blessing. This is what we get. Mm. And it wasn't that these people are eating the communion of Satan. It was the table of the Lord. The moment a minister ceases to walk in love, the moment the scripture is no longer the final authority in the life and ministry, of a minister with respect to a matters of unity and how to treat fellow ministers and indeed how to treat the rest of the body of Christ, it becomes a problem that is called you are not discerning the Lord's body. Hmm. So it was discerning the Lord's body that made Paul to send for Barnabas. He discerned that this guy is also in the body. You know, he spoke about anatomy. That this guy might not be head, it could be leg. Mm -hmm. And at times, if you look at some of the mistakes people make genuinely, Especially when they are young, you realize that at times it's, it has to do with the role that eventually they will play. Mm. <laughs> Which, of course, because of immaturity and, you know, all that age mm. and inexperience, they try to act contrary, you know, to ethical consideration of what we're talking about. But it's important that we discern the Lord's body to say, okay, now, if, even if I'm fighting this guy, I must understand that he's also a member of the body. I'm no more in the body than anyone I'm fighting the body. Mm. So that instead of this table that ought to make me strong, what is mm. producing is sickness. Mm. Because I do not discern. I do not discern. Mm. What, what produces hystericals today is the discernment of the body. Mm. Because, I mean, the Lord said, invite Apostle Femi Lazarus and have this conversation. I would have said, oh, why Femi Lazarus? I don't even know him. You know, let me invite one of my contemporaries, you know, and all that, blah, blah, blah. You know, those things that people say. But you see, because nobody is a senior member of the body. <laughs> it is one body. There's no part of your body that is older than any other part. That is why it's called body. But, but the day you were born, a part emerged before a part. <laughs> mm. Some people, it was the head that came out for. Imagine your head now claiming seniority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or some people, maybe they are in case, or what do they call them? It's, it's the hand that came out first. Some people were breached, but some people came out through CS. Mm -hmm. But what is important is that the body is out. So it is important to understand the workings of the body of Christ. That is what is called discerning. Yes, so that means nobody is written off. Nobody is excluded forever. Mm -hmm. no, you cannot say of anybody that we never. Imagine it. The other day, he gripped my heart and posted when the minister rose up and he said, I will, he said, until I see the Lord, I will never relate with this man. And I'm like, why mm. do we say that? Mm. This, is, this is not discerning the Lord's body. It comes with sickness. And the sickness here, we're not saying that the person will have a dick. You cannot be spiritually fit if you begin to do some things in the body. Mm. It's called sickness. It's a deviation from normal functioning. And, and if you look at those who are attacking everybody, there's, there, you, you can see sickness. <laughs> if you don't see what I mean, you could see that this is not healthy growth. This is some, because cancer is also a form of growth, but it's just that it's a bad growth. And it's even faster than the usual. Growth. Exactly. I mean, you have a medical background. So I want you to speak with that. And that's where we wrap this up before we bring Pastor Daniel in. And the three of us are going to just have another round and, and pray. And uh, we pray for our partners and all that. Discerning the Lord's body. Because hmm. Paul brought it out here. Communion is supposed to bless us. Why would somebody that ordinarily was alive will not go and take communion and he's dead? We, we ordinary was alive, take communion and he's sick. And Paul said the reason is that you are eating it in an unworthy manner. So there's an unworthy manner to do ministry. Yes. An unworthy manner to treat yes. other ministers. So I, I, in, in, in this, I, I, I will speak, you know, from my, um, in, uh, permit me to use the word, little understanding. Yeah. Because this journey is very long. It is, indeed. And it's very deep. <laughs> the things you have seen and survived, may God help us <laughs> to survive it. And I say that in all honesty. Mm. Um, because 
I mean, I, I think what you have said this afternoon, this evening, is one of the biggest testimony any minister should have, mm -hmm. that there's nobody that I'm currently not at peace with, no, except nobody. the person is the one who decide having made all effort. Yeah. And I, I think that, that's a very powerful mm -hmm. testimony. I, 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 if there's anything I will say to design the Lord's body, is that we should never believe that a time will come mm -hmm. that God will believe that because of your spiritual stature, join you against one of his sons. Oh. No. Oh. We are all God's mm. children. Mm. I mean, and God will always seek his own. <sighs> it will never be you and God against somebody. Mm. I think once that small foundation is clear, then we'll know that if there's any issue, it's family issue, mm. we should try to solve it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think also... Um, Recently, a popular musician, I mean, it happened quite often times, released a song, and they were wearing some bishopic robe. I considered it um, a slap on the body, mm. but then it occurred to me that we have done worse. <laughs> By which do we say is worse? When you wear a robe of the church and use it for your own stuff, or when we drag our brothers publicly? Mm. So, I feel it is hypocritical to ignore this and focus mm. on that. Mm. And then, so mm. I think we need to understand the effect mm. of this in the entire move. Mm. It is detrimental. Mm. Yes, sir. So, discernment is key. Yes, sir. Um, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap this up, I want you to discern the Lord's body. And. Where do wars, fightings, and those things come from, like Paul said? And like James said also. And like Paul was saying here, so it is lack of discernment. We all have to work together, the fathers, because you see, in a generation where the fathers are not working with the sons, and the sons are not working with the fathers, like we see in Malachi, there's already a cause at work. Yes, sir. We have to find a way to work together because at the end of the day, we're all working for God. And we must discern. And discerning the Lord's body is, is big because it's also the reason why, even if you are with me and you're not supposed to be with me, I must be able to release you to go. Because you are still in the body. That you are not in my ministry doesn't mean you are not in Christ. Mm -hmm. And if I feel you are needed somewhere more, I should be able to also freely. You know, I mean, recently I met some people and they were like, oh, we, in our church in Nigeria, we go to, and we also go to this place to also serve there. And, and they thought I would say, no, go. I mean, I'm like, if you are needed there, by all means. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's body. And that was what the Lord was praying about in John 17, making us to realize that we should all be wise and discern the Lord's body. And on my birthday, 26th of May today, I'm, I'm, I'm like Paul, I make appeals to the fathers, to friends, to men and brethren, that this is a time to shit our sword, to understand that that brother that you're fighting today might be your Sokora tomorrow, just like Apostle Paul demonstrated. And when that time comes and the Lord says, send for Mark, don't let the hearts of the past now make you to say, I will never have anything to do with Mark again. A minister doesn't talk like that. Because there's nothing like I will never have. If that was to be the case, why would Jesus come back to Peter again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, you know the, do you know the meaning of what it means to deny someone? Betrayer is still good. Judas betrayed. Betrayer means I, I know him. Let me mm. take you to him. Mm. You know the meaning of denier? I don't know him. <laughs> Which one? Which one is what? To say, I know him. Oh, I know him. I'll take you to him. He says, I don't know him. And only for Jesus to still come. He said, Peter, you are still the man. Hmm. Simon Bajona, do you love me more than this? The same guy. If we were to run it by what is obtainable today, that was the end of Peter. Mm -hmm. Because we even justify, he said, a guy that went out fishing. After he betrayed me when I was not here, how many days have I gone? He didn't just, he went to <laughs> seven other people. <laughs> 
you have you have scattered it. <laughs> you now want to hand over to that same guy again, and and the Lord is now saying you are still the man. Now upon this rock I'll still build my church. Let's learn from the Lord. He said, "Learn of me and make, and you'll find rest for your souls." Gentlemen, we're going to bring on site again one of our another friend, and this person came all the way. Please, I need the third seat here. Can we have the red seats? Is there another seat here? No, 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 the red one. Can we have that red seat? Okay, oh, it's, it's for sure there. Or well, if we can have the red seat, more important. Yeah, they're bringing it. That's, that's. But uh, can it be lowered a little? <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we can. So join me to welcome P. Daniel Olawande. <laughs> I mean, look at this powerful man on set. P. Daniel and I just had a conversation yesterday, and he, he sent me a message, and like, I'm in UK, and I told him he's a man of integrity, because he told me the last time we saw him in Nigeria, I said, whenever I come to the UK next, I will let you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know he was in. I just saw the message, and was like, oh, I mean, the, and I called him, I said, you know, I love integrity, and you've shown me that you're a man of integrity. Because I, I mean, you, you didn't need to do this, but because you promised, and, and you were able to do it. And I just told him, I said, oh, today's my birthday, and I'm going to have Apostle Fem Lazarus and whatever. And he was like, give me some time. Let me speak to my host and see whether they will release me to come. Mm -hmm. And after some time, just called me back. He said, my host released me. I'll come. And here we are today. He, he gave his word and he's here. Thank you, Pastor Daniel Olawande. I mean, it's so, so great to have you. So please help us to wrap this up. I mean, you were just back stage in the studio. You had some of the conversation and we just felt we can't have you in the house and not to take advantage of the grace. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, sir. Um, <laughs> this is my... <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, um, I think I tried this. <laughs> no, but this is okay. 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 Man, I'm not talking. <laughs> okay. So is it gonna pay a fortune? Um Is it clear? It sound clear. Okay. Yeah. Be down here, right? I want to say well thank you very much for having me here. I just <laughs> came to celebrate with you. <laughs> It's a privilege to be around you on your birthday. Thank I'm you so, very much. Super excited. Mm -hmm. uh, having met you the last time you came to Redemption Camp, and yeah, had that yeah. sweet fellowship oh, in, God. in your hotel room. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's prophetic meeting. I was just driving in front of the hotel room, and I, you reached out to me. Yeah. I was like, you told me where you were. I said, I'm in front, in front of, of that of the place. place. Exactly. I remember, I I remember that night. The, yeah. You were right there in front yeah, when I, I got my message. I was right there in front when you called me. <laughs> And so it's, um, and then the name of our church is the same. Envoy. Envoy. <laughs> so it's just there's a kindred spirit kind amen, of. You know. Amen, amen, amen. And I'm, I'm happy to be here. And so my brother, Apostle Femi, he's done a great justice to the conversation. Mm. And he's got experience. <laughs> <laughs> he's, talk experience. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking out of experience. <laughs> wow. wow. So, <laughs> he's, he's talking out of experience, so I'm excited that we are uh, able to have this conversation. So my own perspective is um, I've always believed in the best of people. Mm -hmm. I've always believed that love should lead. Amen. And mm -hmm. For me, when I have issues with you, I lose my peace. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I pursue, I make sure that mm -hmm. we get that conversation mm -hmm. done so that... Um, um, there is peace because um, you some things that we call uh, some of us don't know we are not healthy. Mm. When you see a fellow brother, maybe you see his picture or you see his progress and you are sad. Mm. Mm. You know, so mm. that is sickness. That's yeah, what we're it's about. actually sickness. So <laughs> sometimes you will think you are doing a righteous cause, mm. but it's actually the negative growth like a cancer. Mm. So mm. you must get to that point in your life that you see God lifting your fellow brother mm. and you are excited. excited. Mm. You see your brother. You know, sometimes we think that when somebody is being, when somebody is going down, like God is oh. judging the person. Mm. <laughs> uh, so you think you we are excited when people fail. 
mm-hmm. to prove that you are right. Mm-hmm. Uh, is a negative group. So no one has to fail yeah. to do that, you are right. So you don't have to, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to stay in that place whereby you you can prove with point that, you see, you see, I told you. Mm. Actually, when people even leave you, mm. you mm. want them to fail, to prove, to that, prove that. When you leave me, you can't prosper. Mm. So uh, mm. when you begin to feel like that, even mm. at the point of odds, you know that you are not healthy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but the real health is that somebody offends you if, if anything is going wrong with them, there is this empathy, there is this pain that you mm. have. You feel the pain they have. You, mm. you, you want to get them restored. You want to mm. see them get better. Wow. Reconciliation wow. Uh, yeah. is the center of the gospel. Mm. So, um, and restoration. So mm. I'm happy that, and I want to encourage everybody that have one issue or the other from brother to brother. It's not just father to son. It's not just Paul yeah, to uh, mm. uh, Mark now. Uh, we have to do Paul and Barnabas, you know, mm. whereby two of you can forgive yourself mm. and just move on. Mm. Now, uh, friendship is a choice. Love is a command. Mm. You mm. might not be as intimate mm. as you were. Mm. You might not be having uh, the whole relationship. Um, um, uh, maybe just being together 24-7. Mm. Yeah. But Ensure that there is nothing hindering joy in your heart when you see the person progress. Yes. Like, can your son be celebrating something and I can come mm. without feeling like I'm not mm. going there? Can you be having maybe a birthday celebration or church dedication or wedding or something? Can you, you are not in a city or maybe, okay, like, um, maybe Apostle is leaving uh, UK today and I'm around and say, okay, can you help me do this meeting? And we, mm. I'm, he's not afraid to call my number. Yeah, because we have one issue. There's not afraid to say, "Ah, please, mm-hmm. eh, you, we can still talk. Mm-hmm. We can still have conversation." And yeah. that should be the place where every believer should be. Mm-hmm. You might not be best of friends, as mm-hmm. in always talking twenty four seven, you know. But you must be able to have this peace, mm-hmm. follow peace with all men, mm-hmm. peace in your heart that there is no issue, mm-hmm. um, um, whereby you can talk, you can encourage one another. Like if I see something wrong, I won't be afraid of calling you. Yeah. I say, ah. The guy will be thinking that maybe mm. I'm trying to outshine him or I'm trying uh, to pull him yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. When we get to that point, we have mm. we have blocked every opportunity to be blessed. And then offense mm. is offense. Mm. 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 Offense is offense. It fences us out mm. of the will of God. It fences us out of correction. Fences out of blessing. Mm. So we must get to that point and allow by there's no offense. Mm. We must be void, a conscience void of offense. Of offense. Mm. And that's where God can. We, we can really experience the manifold move of God in our midst, mm. whereby we can enjoy the free flow of the Spirit in our meetings. Mm. You don't know that there are sins called the sins of the heart. They hinder the flow of the anointing. Mm. Bitterness, envy, malice, offense, wow. pain, they, they restrict the flow of the anointing. Mm. It's like a faucet whereby uh, certain debts are blocking the flow of water. Yeah. Mm. The problem is not with the tank. The mm. tank is full. Wow. But the part where the water is coming, the water yeah. is coming in trinkles yeah. because there is a blockage. Mm. If you purify and remove mm. those debt from that pipe, mm-hmm. then the water will gush out. Mm. So we are the one restricting the flow of the anointing. Mm. God is not stingy with the oil. Mm. He's not stingy with the grace. Mm. But our life cannot be a pure and a plain and a... Uh, the kind of pipe that God can flow through. Mm. So, and then some of us are stopped mm. at a certain level. Mm. The anointing is not flowing more than it should, because the part of the just as a shining light, it shines more and more to the perfect, perfect day. So yeah. when you see that you are not even moving from a certain level, yeah. you are there, it shows that there is something blocking the yeah. flow. Mm. When it comes to God, it increases. Mm. But if your own case is not increasing, mm. something is wrong. Mm. So this you know, is I must, I must say this about both of you and... Um, just like Pazani, you know, Pazani did not tell you the full story. He came to see me at camp one day, that day, and he came with a powerful seat. <laughs> and I was like, why, why would you do this? And he was like, no, you can't come here. In fact, I wanted to pay for my hotel, remember? Mm. He was like, no, no, no. And I said, yeah, I wanted to stay somewhere. They said, please, because it was immediately after the convention and all that. And since I started relating with Apostle Femi Lazarus, mm. it's been that of honor. And I'm, I'm saying this about both of you, that you, you are very good examples, and we thank God for you. We thank God for you. Please keep this 
humility and simplicity going. It's because we've seen people that started this way. But 10 years, 15 years down the line, things are changing. And I just want to thank God for both of you. But, but as we go, as, as you were talking, that not just about Paul and Barnabas, even Paul and Peter, that now created another scenario. And I'm going to ask Apostle um, Lazarus to speak to this. It's final, it's closing chat. Then we're going to pray. Then we can wrap this up. Then I will ask Pastor Daniel also to speak to this. 2 Peter 3.15 And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. As also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untold and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do the rest of the scriptures. Just like what we're saying, Apostle Frem Lazarus, imagine Peter did not write this about Paul. Mm. Pastor, 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 Pastor Daniel, Paul embarrassed Peter publicly. Yeah. He said, I wish to fit out his face. He said, you are an hypocrite. He said, because you are not, I mean, he came, they were eating with the Gentiles. The moment James came, everybody disappeared and watched their, I mean, they were not taking their mala yet. And Paul was like, what? And you know, the kind of personality of Paul immediately, he came mad. He said, I withstood him to his face. Now, it's not an opportunity. See, th this is what we call designing the Lord's body. That is why the, the, ah, the, the reward of Peter in heaven will be so great. Because this, what we just read now briefly, I, I will tell you what this did in church history. Hmm. Because when they wanted to do the canon of scripture, put it together, in 363 AD at the Council of Nicaea, one of the reasons why they took the books of Paul was because Peter said it was epistle. Hmm. Imagine it was now Peter's turn, if we were to be today, Apostle Femi. Hmm. Peter will now be, this is my final word, let me also rubbish Paul. But in an attempt to rubbish Paul, you are not designing the body. But look at what Peter, how can you write this about someone that embarrassed you? <laughs> that say you are an hypocrite. And look, look at what is, he first of all said, oh my. You see, it, it, that's why when we get to heaven, there, there'll be a lot of surprises. A lot of surprises will be. There are some people that God will rate very high by the reason of how, not, not necessarily the, the, the miracles or the signs or the fire, but the, the, the way they are all the conduct. Because look at it. He said, number one, also our beloved brother Paul, he called him beloved. Somebody that told you publicly, he was Paul did not even do it in a secret. You know, typical Paul, he came mad on them. He said, even Panabas was carried away with the dissimulation. He said, when I saw they were not walking according to the truth of the gospel. I mean, that's Paul for you. Mm. But he said, our he, said I call, he, he said, look, I might not agree with Paul, but I can't deny the fact that wisdom, God has given him wisdom. Mm. Because it, it does appear that the moment we fight people, we don't see anything good in them again. At all. <laughs> but he said, wisdom. And I said, I'm going to wisdom God gave them as written to you. He didn't say, don't mind that Paul. Whatever I write to you, he wrote, he wrote to you, don't even take it seriously. And I said, as also in all his epistles. So the church father said, if Peter can tell us what Paul wrote, his epistle, then we take it. It also means that Paul, huh? Peter studied the epistles of Paul. Exactly. I, I, I was he coming to that. He read and that's why the fact that he's like, he said, this radical old guy, this radical apostle. Right. I cannot deny the fact that this guy is a member of the and, body. And I think he's a product of the working of Jesus' life of Peter. You know, he, he's had his own experience with Jesus, you know, all his mess, and then he kept covering him, kept co coming back for him. So that did a working. Sometimes so the things we pass through, through, exactly. Some things we pass through mm. actually affects the way we do ministry. Mm. Mm. You know, that that the the the, the working of Jesus in the life of Peter mm. has affected Peter so much that he wouldn't throw anybody away. Mm. He, he wouldn't, even when, you know, it was Paul that was saying, some of you are saying I'm from Peter, I'm from <laughs> Apollos. Peter didn't mind, it was, it wasn't. <laughs> and then he came to a point and said, uh, okay, Peter was going to face the, the Jews. The Jews. Apostle Paul was going to do the Gentiles. Okay, then right. when they came together, mm. Peter said, this brother, like, what, what, he, what he was doing, the miracles he was doing among the Gentiles, okay, let's agree with him. And I believe even when they were doing the, that council meeting, 
that they were saying, should we accept what point yeah, is it? And Peter will say, no, no. Yeah. The guy is, you know. And to also show that Paul also got to that level, it was also Paul that now wrote, even though he had issues with Peter, but he also acknowledged that he that is mighty in Peter towards the apostleship to the Jews. He's mighty also mighty in me. I might be going to the Gentiles, he might be going to the Jews, but that doesn't make him inferior. Yeah. But it's just that our core, and we have to find a way. So this, and, and you know, these were the final words of Peter. In the final words of Peter to the church, he exalted the mystery of Paul. And that became an eternal plus for Paul. Mm. Mm. Designing the Lord's body. Mm. I might not like your style. <laughs> that doesn't mean my style is superior anyway. Mm. But again, I have to discern that this guy is also a critical element in the body. And I have to so honor you for that. And just say, okay, yeah, we might not uh, preach the same thing. We might not even go after our styles. might be different. But is this guy in the body? If he's in the body, I discern. So I think um, I want to, the, um, I want, I want us to speak to something. At what point? Mm -hmm. At what point do you shut down false teachers? Okay. And false prophet, because I believe there are people that are like, okay. The lost body, the lost body, but now some people are saying they have one power, they have four levels of power, uh, and the powers, uh, and, but scripture says all power has been given to me. And then somebody say, I've used this power to reduce dollar, I've used this let, power. Let, to... let me help with that. See, but, <laughs> you know what I try to tell people whenever they ask me this question is that I don't think we should bother ourselves about those. Those, those are not men of God. What we are talking about there is unity among men of God. So those who are not men of God, who are something else. At times, it's better for one to just stay focused and just know that. Look, the Lord knows those who are his. And, and if, because it has gotten to a point now that the name man of God is synonymous with all kinds of things. Mm. But the Spirit bears witness. If you, like for instance now, I was just saying when we are starting, this is my second time of seeing Apostle Femme Lazarus in the flesh. This is my third time of seeing you in the flesh. So it wasn't that we relayed yeah, every time. Oh, Pastor yeah. Dele, Pastor Dane, Pastor Dele, Apostle. But the moment I met him for the first time, there was a witness. Same thing also. And that is why you decided to be here. If, if Apostle Lazarus had felt otherwise, I'm sure he would just, he would just look for an explanation to say, oh, we, our itinerary is already full. Just look for a way to escape. But this shows that they, they, we discern. Um, so, false teachers and some of those people who parry themselves on social media who make mockery of the gospel cannot be said to remain of God. And that, that made me Apostle Lazarus has got a different opinion. I don't, I don't bother myself about them. I just focus on the body and those that, uh, because it has gone to a point also you have to understand ethical ministry where. Mm. Is this ministry being done by the Spirit of God? Is it being done? Because, the, and what, what, what gave back to that thought for me was one year like that, it was about five years ago, where the Lord opened up the parable of the wheat and tears to me. And he said, he mm. said, what many of my children are doing is that they are trying to approach the tears. And he said, in the she kingdom of God, you don't approach the tears. He said, there is enough room in the body to allow mm. both to grow together. Mm. Because there's mm. an inbuilt mechanism within the mm. body that is called harvest mm. that will take care of the tears. Mm. The tears will be taken care of. But in an attempt to remove the tears, mm. we'll remove it will the damage weight. the weight. Mm. So mm. that's why, you know, when I said mm. these are not necessarily mm. men of God, mm. it's not that one is saying it to judge people or to look down people. If, if men of God do something wrong, we, we can talk to ourselves. But if, if jokers and jesters, as Paul said, will come in the last times, or scoffers, are the ones doing stuff, we just allow the tears to be. We focus on the wheat. But what must never happen is that the growth of the tears must not be faster than that of the wheat. Both must grow together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I think that there are two um, matters. I mean, I, I totally agree what you have said. Mm -hmm. And we also have to consider the fact that um, um, tender wheat mm. at their tender stage, they mm. have the same morphological semblance with, with like the, the test. Mm. Yeah. So while you are, um, Jesus told Peter, he said, if you love me, love us, love me more than say, feed my lamb, mm. say, feed my sheep. Mm. Um, lambs sometimes behave like goat. 
to say that again. <laughs> they sometimes be like good. So um, we we don't attack things at the attender level. Mm. There are things that in in attacking it we give it publicity. Wow. Um, you know, and mm. um, they are unnecessary. Mm. But I just want to say, I mean, you know, about the flow of thought to be having um, the unity of the the body. Um, I want to say something, and I want to say it intentionally, and the way it is. Mm. You know, at certain point in my life, I, it just occurred to me that even when people say that, oh, Apostle Lazarus is wise, it just occurred to me that there are aspects I'm not wise. I'm not... Let me give you an instance. And this is about discerning the lost body. Mm. If I want to build relationships, how do you build and sustain relationships? How do you... The person I look at is him. Mm. Mm. If I want to know who is having birthday in the body of Christ that I can't, who have I forgotten? Oh God, who have not, the page I go to is his page. So I, because I saw that this person has some wisdom I don't have. Mm. It cuts across. Yes. Mm. He, 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 he stops, he does. I'm, he, I'm just saying this in all honesty. I don't know, maybe yeah. people should not have said this, but <laughs> I grew up from the north. Mm. So there we are just direct, you know. So uh, no, 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 I don't know how to, but I'm, I'm saying it as it is, you know. Mm. Just acknowledging that. Ah, look at Lawrence. Look at Pidan. Ah, this aspect, <laughs> I'm a full hell. Mm. But this person is a plus. And mm. I'm going to say something. There's something people don't know. The moment certain things began to happen in our ministry, mm. one day after Bible study, he called me. And we had over an hour conversation. Mm. He said, this is what you should do. This is what you should do. My other tab is there. I jotted everything down. Wow. Mm. This person has the blueprint. And I, I told my wife, I said, what if he didn't call me? Mm. Wow. I would have made many mistakes. I wonder if we are fighting. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the, so Our he said, to talk this is what you. God is doing in your life. Mm. This is what God is doing in your life. Go about it like this. Do it like this. Oh, God. Hmm. When I do it, people say it's wise. But that is also wisdom, the ability to also receive from others hmm. and listen to what others are bringing, not hmm. thinking that he ends with you hmm. and refusing counsel. Hmm. That's wisdom. Hmm. But I mean, God just used him, and you know, for me it was wow. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. You know, so the fact that we need to know that hmm. nobody's an island. Yeah. You know, hmm. your ministry may be loud. Hmm. But somebody has the depth. Mm, yeah. And when the noise is over. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, for me, those things, we need mm -hmm. to pay attention. There's so much to gain from each other. Mm, amen. Amen. Well, so earlier today we were with uh, at our site. And uh, so I've told everybody today, the only thing I want people to do for me on my birthday is to be part of uh, the ongoing project at the church site. I, I told them, and I'm still saying it, because I've warned, I've warned on social media, I've warned in church. I know some people are still around here. I don't know what they came to do. <laughs> I've said I don't want anything. I, I can't have that kind of massive project ahead of me. And all I'm, I'm doing is buy another car, you know, doing all those things we do for birthdays, sowing a seed. And so I, I still mean that today because I was looking at my social media page. People are asking for my account number. They want to say, so please, you don't need my account number this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them to put up the church account. Um, and they're going to put up two accounts, one for uh, Envoy Nation in the UK, for those who want to give in the UK, and for those who want to give in Nigeria, they'll put up uh, the account number of the church in Nigeria uh, so that we can, you know, support, support the work. And I'm, go I'm going to ask my brothers to pray. But before they do, I think there's a video there just to show people uh, they can roll that now, what is happening at the site. Uh, pictures, there are pictures, please. And, um, and this afternoon, Apostle Lazarus was there and Pastor Daniel was there too. We were all there to go pray in the place. Every pastor friend who, who came by, I took them there. Pastor Poj was there too on Friday to pray too. And uh, that is what we're doing now. And so if ever you want to be a blessing on my birthday, that is the, that's all I want. Whatever you want to buy, the pair, the tie, the suit, whatever it is, the car, the house, the land, 
<laughs> please, you know, I'll put it in the project account. Yes, the Nigeria account is there and the UK accounts. For those in the UK, please, is there on, on the screen. And for those in Nigeria, if you are watching from Nigeria and you don't want to give pound sterling, and we're people of integrity, where well, everything given is going into this project because the Lord is building himself a, a very powerful house. And I just felt that's the best. I did the same last year. Men of God, last year was when we started initiating the project. Mm. And I told everybody, in fact, I stood in front of the church and I warned them, just mm. like I did this last Sunday too. I said, don't give me anything. And to the glory of God, that last Sunday, last year, what people put together as birthday present for me and they put in a church account was 10,000 pounds. And uh, we're trusting God that this year, people also do much more. So that time has come. You want to give a, a birthday present to Pastor Dede. You want to partner with us. This project, it's a house God is building for himself here in Leicester. It's a very massive project. We are at the tail end now. So I'm going to ask the man of God to pray as God puts it in your heart what to do. So if you're in Nigeria, you can use the baptizing church account. They will find a way of getting it across to us. And if you're in the UK, US, you can use the account details of the Envoy Nation, which I believe is already on the screen. So I'm going to ask Pastor Daniel to pray for us, uh, just to pray for partners and friends and everyone. And not just for those who are giving, everyone who are giving. This project started last year, like I said, and, and to the glory of God, God is actually the one. I don't want to mention the figure we've spent so far and where we are still going because, I mean, we're not trying to leo anybody to do just do what god has put in your heart to do and as we just pray and i'm just going to ask them to to join me and, and pray and we bring this telecast to a close so pastor daniel please what is the lord asking you to say to the people and how are you praying for the people yes yeah, psalm 50 verse 5 says gather my saints together unto me who have made covenant with me by sacrifice hallelujah it means there are certain gatherings in the spirit that only partners, covenant partners can assess. Mm. Uh, every saint can come, but there's a level you get to, but saints by sacrifice have access. Mm. Uh, everyone that have been part of this project or will be part of it, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you have access into spiritual things, have access into financial debts, Amen. have access into deeper realms financially. Amen. The Lord will open doors for you Amen. because no man builds the house of the Lord and the Lord will not build the life of the person. Mm. Because you are part of this project, the Lord will bless you. Amen. 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 When Abraham gave to Melchizedek, he got blessing. I decree you are blessed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You lack nothing. Your heavens Amen. open. Amen. Your heavens open. Amen. Your heavens open. Amen. After Solomon gave the sacrifice, God came to meet him and asked him, what do you want? Mm. Now, that was a setup. Now, if you come to me physically and you ask me a question, I know what to answer. How can God come to you in the dream mm. and you answer correctly? Mm. You, 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 are, you are in an unconscious realm mm. and then God came to you said what do you want he said eh, the people you have brought gave me to lead I'm not wise enough to lead them in give dream. me wisdom mm. in the dream mm. and then God said because you have not asked for money mm. I will not give you that's a setup that's mm. like God setting you up that's like God rigging the election on your behalf he didn't allow beavers to work if you're in Nigeria you understand the meaning of beavers not working he didn't allow anything to work he just rigged wow. the election wow. in your favor wow. he, he, wow. He, he, he ah my God it's like God just look at your party and then I asked everybody to keep clicking on your party. Mm. Nothing was working. There was no electoral agent that could, that could, no monitoring officer can tell you what happened in that election. That God came to you in the dream, you answered correctly, and that's now because you answered well, now you will not get this one. Now, because of what you are giving for this project, God will set you up for blessings. Amen. God will set you up for blessings. Amen. God will set you up for blessings. Amen. Divine setup. Amen. for blessings in the name of jesus Amen. you remember the sacrifice and you will see god built for you god Amen. will build your life god will build for you Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. you will never be stranded Amen. you will never be stranded Amen. devourers are removed for your sake Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. because of this your sacrifice and because of what you will sacrifice later and because of what you have sacrificed before now the lord will set to you Amen. and the lord will give you peace Amen. in the name of jesus Amen.
And those who desire to give that don't have yet, it is God that giveth seed to the sower Hallelujah. and bread to the eater. He will bless you. Amen. He will prosper you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you for the grace and the blessings of the gift of men as touching this project. We are grateful. We thank you. Because except you build the house, the laborers labor in vain. Mm -hmm. Father, we are asking for speed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That you will, there will be a reign of abundance. Amen. There will be supplies, Amen. even of convictions in the heart of men, Amen. to run with this project. Amen. That when next we are here, it will be on a new level. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you and we give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, let me again seize the opportunity to thank Apostle Femi Lazarus. Uh, we came all the way to just be with us. And of course, uh, Pastor Daniel Olawande, who had to travel. He, Pastor Daniel actually came to minister in Manchester, had to drive two hours down here. And he's also driving back tonight to go to Manchester just to honor me. <laughs> he just said, man of God, I'm coming to honor you on your birthday. And uh, this is a great honor. And this same thing he did last time was at retention camp came in to honor me. I do not take that for granted. Thank you very much. Apostle Lazarus, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And sir. everyone on set, those behind the scene, Pastor Collins, all the young men, Dr. Oshene, and the uh, instrumentalists, uh, the technical crew, and of course, everyone that watched. Thank you very much. And let me also seize the opportunity to thank everyone for their birthday wishes and greetings for the gifts. Uh, for honoring us all day. In fact, I have to throw my phone away at some point. So if I've not answered your call, it's not because I didn't, you know how it can be. That, that would mean I'll spend the whole day answering calls. And I don't want to do that. But I'll try and return some of those calls in the days to come. And uh, if we cannot, please understand, it's because of the volume, but we'll try. Also on social media, thank you very much. And the Lord, the Lord will honor you. It's been one birthday that I've also enjoyed uh, the grace of God. The last one year has been phenomenal for me. And I'm looking forward to what God will do as I step into this new age and new season. Well, on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, the savior of the body, I want to bid everyone farewell. And uh, we'll see you another time. And I'm sure very soon, not too far from now, you'll hear from us again about uh, the next thing God will be doing with us. Uh, God bless and uh, good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.